Uh, thanks uh, to ISMB for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, design and results of a protein-protein uh, docking scoring function called ProQDoc that we developed in Link Shopping University in my postdoc. Uh, ProQDoc, the term comes from another uh, scoring function called ProQ, which is uh, very popular in structure prediction and doing very good, uh, very well, one of the best functions in recent CASP experiments. Uh, so, uh, um, since it has already been discussed a lot, uh, that uh, uh, we have a lot of scope for computational pipeline to develop docking methods, uh, and especially there was a talk yesterday on the dark proteome. Uh, it's, it's kind of known that there is still a very large gap to fill up between the number of available sequences and the structures. Uh, so there is uh, an urgent need of new and efficient docking uh, pipelines as well as uh, the confidence estimates or scoring functions to validate rank and score them. Uh, so there are these uh, <coughs> two kinds of approaches. Ab initio docking, it deals with uh, huge sampling and a lot of computational time uh, when you uh, consider that uh, the, the conformational space needs to be sampled uh, in, in six uh, physical time, uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, the other uh, alternative approach is of course to rely on the available data uh, of uh, complexes we have. Uh, the, so that falls under the category of template or knowledge guided docking. Uh, in one of the, uh, the uh, one of the projects in uh, Link Shopping University, the lab I belong to, uh, it, it, there is a, a pipeline uh, being developed called Interpret, which is based on uh, <clears throat> structural alignment. And uh, since we know that uh, there are twilight zones and midnight zones of protein sequences and low sequence identity uh, proteins can actually lead to uh, identical fold, which falls under the category of uh, fold recognition problem. Uh, uh, perhaps structural alignment is a better choice than sequence alignment, uh, both for uh, predictions of structure and interaction. So uh, in, in, in my PhD work, I, I did uh, <coughs> um, something on the concept of complementarity, and uh, we, we uh, could show that uh, folding and binding could be envisaged from the same conceptual platform uh, based on the concept of uh, complementarity. So it's very important to understand these two uh, <coughs> very fundamental ideas in this field called shape and electrostatic complementarity. So packing uh, coupled with electrostatics and uh, solvent accessible surface areas, uh, those three parameters can actually uh, build a ballpark where you need uh, to come and see uh, the, uh, the efficient quality of uh, structures, uh, both uh, single domain and uh, multi-domain or uh, binding models. Uh, so this was developed by Lawrence and Coleman called the shape complementarity statistic. Uh, so they did it in uh, 1993 when uh, the, uh, the, all, the, all the available structures in the PDB at that time, irrespective of their biological origin, were sampled. And uh, first, you need to uh, calculate the uh, molecular surfaces, these Connolly surfaces as you can see here, and uh, these are essentially area elements, and then you need to figure out the nearest neighboring dot surface point uh, coming from the partner molecule, and that can come from uh, any, any, uh, any uh, side chain or main chain atom uh, in principle from the partner molecule. Uh, so these two dot surface points are said to be in alignment. Uh, for a good fit, this should align parallel. So since they are area elements, they are essentially unit normal vectors, and you need to take care of this uh, alignment by this dot product. Uh, so one, one vector is protruding outwards and the other coming inwards so that you have a value of plus one uh, for a perfect fit. Uh, there is also a distance dependence here, which is taken care of in this exponential Gaussian type squared function. Uh, the beauty of this function is that it can sharply draw uh, the, fun uh, the overall function close to zero whenever this d exceeds a certain threshold, for example, 3.5 angstrom. 
W is a scaling constant, and uh, <coughs> so you end up sampling uh, all the dot surface points and uh, gathering all the pairs of nearest neighboring uh, dot surface points. So you, you end up getting a, a, a distribution of SC values and you take the median of the distribution because it was uh, uh, shown that uh, these distributions are negatively skewed. So uh, those structures that were available at uh, 1993 in the PDB, the complex structures, they all gave rise to a very high shape correlation, uh, we're ranging from 0.6 to 0.7, uh, irrespective of their biological origin. Uh, four years later, uh, <clears throat> the same group came up with uh, the electrostatic complementarity measure. Here also you need to sample uh, the uh, molecular surface and then you uh, solve the linearized version of the Poisson-Boltzmann partial differential equation iteratively uh, using Delphi and uh, calculate uh, electrostatic potential uh, at the interface uh, uh, twice for a given uh, interface. Uh, once due to the charged atom of this molecule and the other time due to the charged atoms of the uh, partner molecule. So you end up getting uh, two uh, electrostatic potential values tagged with each dot surface point and you then calculate the Pearson's correlation of uh, that distribution uh, and append it with a negative sign because uh, for uh, classical interactions, uh, uh, surface uh, potentials at the interface should be anti-correlated. You want to make it correlated by multiplying with minus one. So it was also found that uh, interactions uh, could range uh, very high in their value. Uh, uh, both SC and EC ranges from minus one to plus one, and both gave rise to high values, say for example, of the order of 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Uh, <clears throat> It also uh, showed, this paper also showed that the complementarity in terms of electrostatics is actually uh, with respect to the potentials at the interface and not with respect to overall charge distribution. In fact, there were no charge complementarity found uh, of these interacting surfaces. Now we took those two measures and uh, <clears throat> probed the internal architecture of proteins. So we, they, they did it for the interface, we did it for the interior, and developed this validation tool called the complementarity plot, which is kind of inspired by the Ramachandran plot, uh, where you have uh, shape complementarity and electrostatic complementarity in the uh, horizontal and the vertical axis, and uh, you have regions called the probable, less probable, and improbable uh, you know, uh, based on uh, statistical evidence for, of high resolution crystal structures present in the PDB. So uh, given a structure, you can uh, calculate these values. So the, as you can see, this is a function of solvent exposure, a burial of, sol of solvent exposure. So there are actually three plots like this for a different burial beans, and we, uh, I'm, I'm showing you uh, the, f the one for the completely buried bean. Uh, so one thing you have to uh, notice here is that the thickness with regard to the shape complementarity function is much, much thinner than the thickness with regard to the electrostatic complementarity function, which is also correlated with the short and long range nature of forces that govern uh, these uh, parameters. We also extended uh, this for the interface ladder. That was my first uh, postdoc work. Uh, <coughs> So uh, for, for designing scoring functions for docking, uh, we uh, first need some quality measures. And the uh, current uh, qu quality measure for the interaction prediction field is actually a combination of three measures uh, proposed by Capri, which is FNAT, IRMS, and LRMS. FNAT is the fraction of interfacial residues uh, preserved at the uh, model interface. Uh, the IRMS is the interface RMS deviations uh, where the, RM, uh, where, where the uh, interface of the model is superposed on the top of the interface of the natives based on certain contact criteria. And uh, the LRMS is the uh, RMS deviation calculated for the small molecule, which is smaller partner, which is the ligand upon superposition of the larger molecule, which is the receptor. So based on these three measures, uh, they propose uh, context dependent ad hoc cutoffs to uh, categorize the models in one of these four classes. Uh, so uh, the, all the measures needs to be uh, viewed together to reveal the true quality of the docked pose. Uh, so this is, in principle, you can use either of the three me measures or uh, in, in a series of three uh, 
a different uh, training run uh, to train your machine on, on, this scoring, uh, on these quality measures, but that is rather inconvenient. So we decided to combine them and to combine them into a single quality measure and we, which we termed doc q. So for that first, all the three measures had to come into same directionality and we use this uh, inverse square scaling technique which is very popular in this field, uh, uh, <coughs> which, which brings this uh, uh, RMS division terms uh, you know, in an in in inverted manner and also the square term makes it very sharp so that the arbitrariness involved in the higher values of RMS deviations, for example, 10 angstrom and 20 angstrom are actually taken care of. Uh, they, they are no arbitrariness after the scaling. Uh, so in, in other words, if you have two structures of 10 angstrom and 20 angstrom RMS deviations, both are equally poor, but one happens to uh, have a magnitude twice than the other. So after the scaling, we uh, weighted all three terms equally and we directly took the arithmetic mean of the three. And these parameters were uh, trained, optimized uh, uh, in the training database, uh, of course. And uh, they effectively means is that uh, the value, the RMS deviation value where uh, the scaled RMS deviation is half or 0.5. So finally, we, uh, we can now discuss about the uh, design of the scoring function. We used uh, support vector regression machines uh, with a radial basis kernel. And these two parameters, the C and the gamma, they were optimized during the uh, <coughs> five-fold cross-validation process. And we wanted to maximize the correlation between uh, the predicted uh, score and the quality measure doc Q. We also, uh, you know, incorporated a hybrid technique called ProQ doc Z, which combines uh, ProQ doc and the two so-called competing methods against which we compared our performance, uh, and, and which also seem to improve uh, a little bit uh, the original performance written by ProQ doc. So ProQ doc uh, is a combination of several features. And now if we look at those features, the high level structure descriptors, we can, uh, okay, so it's not happening. Okay, so um, uh, if you look at the features, they could essentially be classified into two major groups. One is the interfacial features and the other one is the all atom features. And it was uh, uh, deliberately you know, designed in a way that both the all atom uh, features and the interfacial features has kind of equal weight. Uh, we have uh, shape complementarity, of course, electrostatic complementarity. We have the first two terms uh, defining uh, the relative size of the interface, uh, how small or large it is. Then we have a solv solvation term, the RGB. Uh, we have a contact preference score, which effectively takes care of the uh, distribution of amino acids, preferential distribution of amino acids at the interface. Then we have packing terms like link density at the interface and of course uh, sh shape complementarity. We have electrostatic term uh, and we have a joint conditional probability of both the two uh, terms, uh, SC and EC, given the relative size of the interface. Then we, we have ProQ2, which is again an all atom measure. Uh, and then we have some Rosetta energy terms. So, so you have to note that the Rosetta, uh, so the energy terms have opposite directionality to all other terms involved. Uh, so again, the, uh, the energy terms can further be classified into binding energy, that is the ISC, and the total energy, they can, that is again an all atom feature. A repulsive term that takes care of the clashes and the total minus repulsive term, which does not take care of the clashes, because you may, uh, you can have, you know, orientations which are very good, although it involves some amount of steady clash. On the other hand, you can have no steady clash, but a completely wrong orientation sampled as a docked pose. You want to be, uh, you know, train your method with both kind of examples and appropriate uh, <coughs> energy terms. So uh, ProQDoc was built uh, by compi gradual compilation of uh, these uh, interface and all atom energy terms. As you can see, that the best individual performance was retained for EC, which is the electrostatic complementarity, and the interfacial features had a better uh, performance, much better, much better contribution to the overall performance, but the all atom features were also contributing in a non-negligible manner. 
So, uh, so end up getting, uh, we end up get, uh, getting a, a correlation value near 2.5 with doc q in the five-fold cross-validated uh, benchmark, uh, which were slightly increased uh, <coughs> by the incorporation of the competing methods in the hybrid method. So this was the cross-validated benchmark. We used uh, two data sets, uh, the Capri score set, which is a realistic example of actual docking experiments where you have people submitting their models, uh, you know, developing those models f uh, with a la large variety of methods. And then you have this uh, benchmark for uh, 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 data set, uh, which was generously uh, contributed by, uh, given by the authors of this uh, paper. Uh, and that was, that, that was using just one, uh, one kind of uh, methodology to build up all the models, which was swarm doc. Uh, so, in a sense, they were systematically sampling all possible docked poses that one can have. So, we, uh, we, the combination of these two data sets essentially uh, led to a combined data set where we took care of uh, realistic examples also, and the ones could be missed by uh, those realistic examples by systematic sampling. Uh, as we can see, we improved the performance in terms of the area under the curve in these uh, rock curves uh, <coughs> with respect to uh, the Z-Doc scoring functions. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the uh, hybrid method was also doing uh, equivalently with, with, with respect to the uh, original method. Uh, in an independent benchmark, we retained the performance and there was slight improvement with respect to uh, the original method uh, when we uh, com combined the uh, th three with a, a, a weighted linear uh, uh, sum, uh, that is pro -Q doc Z rank and Z rank two. So there is a hint, there is an indication that there might be a complementary behavior in terms of picking up true positives between pro -Q doc and the Z rank two uh, uh, scoring functions. So in order to investigate that, we uh, took two sets where uh, ProQDoc was uh, picking up correct models which were missed by Z rank 2 and vice versa. And then we did a feature statistics on that. Uh, so our hypothesis was, was that there is a complementary behavior between uh, models that were ranked by ProQDoc and Z rank 2, which were, uh, which, which, which um, both kinds of models should be picked up by the hybrid method. So as we can see, there were, there were contrasting feature statistics, uh, you know, reflected in this value of, uh, uh, reflected in this p, p value, uh, and especially I want to point out to the electrostatic complementarity difference. As you can see, our method, were, since it was trained in electrostatic complementarity, it was picking up uh, values with high EC, and uh, th which was not the case for uh, the Z rank two method. So we investigated certain examples, and what was found out was pretty interesting that you can actually have a negative electrostatic complementarity at the interface in a statistically significant cases. But of course, these were uh, models, these were realistic models. So in order to uh, verify uh, whether this is the case for the natives, we did the same on the native database, uh, in a native database as well. As you can see here, this model, one JPS, has a native EC value of 0.62. Whereas this one, one GCQ, it has a native EC value, which is already negative. So it's, it's kind of anticipated that uh, the, the EC value for the model, even if it is correct, even if it is a very good model, will be negative and positive in the two cases, respectively. Uh, the EC value also correlates with the binding energy term, as you can see. For binding energy, the lower value is the better. So, uh, so this one uh, has a better binding energy with respect to that one. But the interesting thing to observe here that the shape correlation is always high. So uh, the idea, for, you know, analyzing these models, these examples, what we got was that there might be a statistically significant number of cases where geometric constraints can actually compensate for the electrostatic imbalance at the interface. Uh, which was also true for native interfaces, as I have mentioned. We also uh, used the much advanced version, multi-dielectric version of the Delphi, and the results were uh, reproducible. And uh, then we did a reality check. I'll be finishing in just a moment. Uh, yeah, so uh, there was a reality check where we found out that uh, 
uh, the native values uh, were in, in scale with the high, uh, uh, highly ranked models uh, so among these four categories, and ProQ doc is available here. And just one more point before I end is that there is a, there is a problem, uh, there's a current challenge in CASP and Capri regarding accessing dimers, where you have multiple chains uh, of a partner in a docked pose uh, or docking complex. Uh, and we want to have the correct orientation of the two chains so that uh, uh, you, you, you end up getting the actual uh, quality of the model. And, and this uh, exponentially grows with uh, you know, number of monomers in the chain. Uh, so doc Q actually... You're over time already, you have to come to an end now. Okay, okay so, uh, so I want to thank uh, my supervisor and my PhD supervisor, uh, and uh, the travel fellowship uh, that was provided by ISCB. <laughs>